Okay, so welcome to this fifth video on uh, the transformations of random variables. Uh, right, so in this video what I'm going to do is re-derive this formula and use it f using a simpler technique. Uh, however, I still back the way we originally did it. Uh, the reason being that uh, I think the re first, this reason here, this um, uh, take your interval, convert it back into what it is there, and then use the definition of the PDF on there. I think that's a better understanding of what you're of um, what you're really doing. And I think if you understand that, you've got a good intuition about what PDFs really are. Um, what we're going to do now is use the CDFs, which is a much more elegant way to derive this formula. And the uh, uh, but as I say, I think the origin, the initial version we did is the better version to understand, uh, especially because in the next video what we'll do is uh, generalize this uh, to uh, joint random variables, and there the CDF argument falls down, whereas this argument in terms of PDFs and air, well, it'll go in, it'll turn into from uh, lengths of intervals, it'll turn into areas and volumes. That still holds, basically. Yes, okay, uh, these derivatives have to become Jacobians rather than derivatives, but, um, but yes, uh, it does work nicely. So we will, um, we will uh, see this again. Where a, a similar, we will we'll see similar arguments uh, very shortly when we come to do transformations of joint random variables. Uh, but for now, we're going to see another argument uh, for how to transform uh, these uh, just single random variables. So uh, let's remember what we had. We had our abstract probability space, which was being mapped onto uh, the real line uh, by a random variable x. Okay, we then took a function g, which was going to transform this random variable here into onto another random variable. Uh, so basically, it was going to map every real number onto a new real number, and it had certain properties. It was strictly increasing, and it was uh, differentiable. And basically, we're going to create a new random variable from that. The composition of the two forms a new random variable, and we're interested in what the PDF of this uh, new random variable is. Well, let's calculate the CDF of this new random variable and then just take the derivative. That's a very simple way of doing it, uh, and providing, of course, that finding the CDF is simple. And finding the CDF is actually quite a bit more easy than finding the uh, PDF. So uh, let's say big F of this new random variable G uh, composed with X or alpha for, as a function of a little y. So you take a little y in here and basically what we are doing is saying um, if you view the function as basically acting like here. So what I've done is I've twisted this round now and it's up here. So this is this random real real line here and this is this real line here so this one is the uh, horizontal axis and this one is the vertical axis and we've got some strictly increasing function okay so if I uh, if I give you an example of a strictly increasing function it's the exponential here so if I take some real number y and I take the inverse image of it the pr uh, the number the number in this real line which was mapped onto that so I get some x here then if I want the uh, the PDF, sorry, the CDF of this new random variable as a function of y, by definition that is just equal to the probability that this random variable uh, g of x is less than or equal to y. So it's the probability basically of all of this interval here. But this is where the strictly increasing part comes into its own. And th that's a good reason to uh, you look at this derivation because then you really see why strictly increasing is, uh, is very, very important. Because what we are asking is for the probability Probability, and of course, I should really say um, I should really have double prime there because it's the probability of this interval in this abstract probability space. So I should have double prime because that's the probability measure on this uh, new probability space where I'm viewing p prime as being the probability measure on this one, and p as being the probability on that one. But just think of that as saying the probability of this interval here. Okay, well, uh, basically what we, uh, what we know is that that is going to be the same as the probability of the pre-image of that interval. I, if you find me, uh, what, find me what this interval is in this real line here, well that's very, very easy. Uh, because of the strictly increasing nature, it's going to be all of this. So any point um, less than this value x, which is x is equal to uh, the inverse image of this point y, so any point x which is less than that 
is going to have a g value because of the fact that g was strictly increasing. If you take a point in this real nut line which is less than x, then the value of g that it's mapped onto must be strictly less than the value of g that x was mapped onto. So it will basically fall in this green interval. So the pre-image of this green interval is this pink interval here, i.e. Uh, if we work out the probability of this interval here, uh, then, um, then uh, that's going to be equal to the probability of this green interval because the two probability spaces are homomorphic in this way, or they, they mirror the structure of one another. Uh, so this is going to be equal to the CDF of the random variable big X evaluated at this point here, which is g inverse of y. So the conversion of the CDFs is a lot, a lot simpler than the conversion of the PDFs. Of course, this assumes the, the fact that g inverse of y exists. If I take a, um, if I take a negative number in the case of the exponential, uh, then g inverse of y clearly won't exist, so there won't exist a point, in which case I'll just define the CDF to be zero for those points, okay? Uh, so it's very, very simple. Uh, so, uh, but if there is an inverse image, of it, then the CDF conversion is going to be equal to this. So if I want to find the PDF of this random variable now, all I do is differentiate with respect to y. So if I differentiate with respect to y, this function here, f of gx as a function of little y, then uh, it's the same as the derivative of this thing here. So um, let me... Um, Okay, so um, let's just write out what we have got so far. We've got the uh, CDF of this new random variable evaluated at point little y is equal to the CDF of the old random variable evaluated at g inverse of y. Okay, so what we're going to do is say that the derivative of this is equal to the PDF uh, evaluated at y, and all we need to do is differentiate this side, basically, to find out what it is. So f of x evaluated at g inverse of y. So basically, we'll just apply the chain rule. We'll say, let's differentiate, let's imagine, let's call this thing here x. We'll differentiate this outer function with respect to x, and then we'll differentiate this inner bit with respect to y, basically. So uh, if we differentiate the outer bit with respect to uh, this, uh, this value in here, g inverse of y, uh, which we could just label x, then this becomes the PDF of big X evaluated at g inverse of y. And then we have to take the derivative with respect to y of g inverse of y, okay? Uh, but think about what that means. So um, remember this function, g of, g of x. g was a function of this real number converting you onto here. It was strictly increasing. So g uh, of x was strictly increasing, was strictly increasing. So, if we want the derivative of g inverse of y, what does, with respect to y, what does that mean? It means take a point y, uh, go forward an, am an amount, uh, a, a tiny little amount, so go forward by y plus h, uh, and then take uh, the uh, value. So, firstly take g inverse of y, which is this function evaluated at y, and then take g inverse of y plus uh, h. And basically what it says is if it wants the gradient, but in now it wants the gradient a different way. So it wants you to divide the difference in this function here, which is this difference. So it wants you to uh, take uh, g inverse of y plus h, and it wants you to subtract g inverse of y, and then it wants you to divide that. It wants you to take the ratio of that with this difference here, which is h. So we'll divide that by h. Okay, so basically what that will do is it will find the gradient of this line, but it won't find it with respect to the normal way you'd find it. The normal gradient is telling you uh, what uh, it's t telling you what this is over this thing here. This is taking this difference here and dividing it by this difference here. So basically, it's going to be one over the usual gradient. So this derivative with respect to y of g inverse of y evaluated at some point y, we're assuming. So we're saying evaluate this at some, we're assuming we're evaluating this at a little value y. The notation's slightly clumsy, uh, because what you'd really say is you'd then say, differentiate this and evaluate it at a point little y. Um, but uh, this is going to basically equal one divided by the usual derivative of this. So the derivative of uh, uh, the derivative of g of x with respect to x, but then you want to evaluate that at um, x is equal to g inverse of uh, y. 
So basically, uh, what I'm saying is this derivative here, the derivative of, of g of x with respect to x is the usual derivative. So if you take, if you're looking at g as a function of x onto the real line, uh, then uh, with the derivative is the gradient of this line. Uh, what this meant is it meant the gradient as viewed almost from this axis, and then you'd obviously have to flip it round because the positive numbers are this going this way now, and the negative numbers are going this way. Uh, but ba so basically, those gradients of one are reciprocally related to one another. And uh, but this is going to evaluate it at a point x, and we want to evaluate it at the point x is equal to g inverse of y. So we could write this as one over g prime of g inverse of y. So there is another way, basically, to, de to derive this formula. So now if we just substitute that in, uh, this value in for here, we'll get that the PDF of uh, g of x as a function of y is equal to the uh, PDF uh, of x uh, evaluated at g inverse of y divided by g prime of g inverse of y. Okay, so that's, uh, let me just circle that, box that, uh, that's that for this video.